Has John ever mistaken Veronica as Nessa? Yes. Have you adjusted to living without me? Yes. Is it hard? No. <laughs> Who stays in Ronnie's room now that she moved? Dun dun dun! This is a, a controversial question. Oh, what? <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Veronica. I'm Vanessa. And today we're doing a Q&A. We have an updated Q&A for you guys. Basically, our lives are so different now from the last time we did the Q&A. This is our updated Q&A. Updated on, update on life. We asked you guys some questions on Instagram. You guys make sure to follow our Meryl Twins Instagram so you can be up to date with what kind of videos we're filming like this one. We are in Ronnie's old room mm -hmm. and we actually I actually believe this is probably going to be the last video filmed in here with this furniture. Well, we believe that this is going to be the last video filmed in Ronnie's official room, like furniture. It's going to change up. She's going to take this furniture to her house, to her new house. So it's going to look completely different and it's going to be a guest room soon. So yes. definitely going to miss this vibe. So we just decided to do like a little nostalgic homage to Ronnie's old room. Last video in here with the old furniture. Yes. <laughs> yes. Make sure to subscribe to our channel if you're new and hit the bell button to get notified when we post a new video. I've actually pulled 40 questions. 40? We probably won't put all of them in because there's a lot. That's a lot of questions. Ronnie has no idea what the questions are. I feel like I have an idea of what they're gonna be. Okay, I feel like you should read the first one. This is from John. Can you bail me out of jail? <laughs> What? Oh my goodness. No. No, John. Okay. <laughs> Do you act any differently since you don't live together anymore? By the way, love you guys. Love uh, you too, Isabel. I think so. I definitely think we act a little bit differently. I think there's definitely been a change. I mean, I mean, it's a big, it's a big change in our lives anyway. Like, how could we not change as people? Like, mm -hmm. I'm a homeowner. I'm married now. I come here to work and hang out. And so I just feel like because I don't live here anymore, I feel like I really appreciate my time here. So I don't really spend it just kind of like doing like nothing. I t try to make my the most of my time here. We now kind of like appreciate spending time together more. Yeah. More than we used to because, you know, back then you kind of take time with your sibling for granted because you live at home with them. Right. And so now when she comes over, there's definitely just like a different vibe and we have kind of like a lot more fun. Not that we didn't have fun back in the day, but I think there's a lot more room to like an appreciation for just the funness we have. I feel like just everything about Ronnie's personality has been kind of like heightened a little, like just like really good qualities have like shown through. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but I just feel like I really appreciate the little things more so than ever. I would say the same for you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's different, but it's in a positive way. Yeah, and There's we nothing see negative. each other literally every day. Yeah, and like, I'll call her, I'll text her, she texts me. Mm -hmm. Honest, I feel like I'm here all the time anyway. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel too different, but yeah. it is at the same time. It's very different. Yeah. What's one bad habit about yourself that you've changed? I think this is a great question. And I will start biting my nails. I've actually recently gotten like really into doing my own nails. And these are actually like my natural nails. See how Ooh, long they are. They're, yeah. These aren't the best that I've done. And I have a random color on one of the nails, but I've been doing my nails and I don't bite them anymore. I, and when they're too long, I don't go to like, a, I don't bite them. I actually trim them. So that That's is one good. habit that I've tried my whole life to get rid of. And it took me 26 years <laughs> to stop it and figure out what's going to make me stop biting my nails. And that doing my own nails because when I put in the hard work, what a disappointment it is to bite them all off when they've grown so long, right? <laughs> right. So that's one habit that I've changed. That's good. I think one habit that I've changed... <laughs> hmm, let's see. I'd like to think that I'm a bit more cleaner just with everything happening in the house. It's so easy to just kind of leave things out. But I feel like I do have a different appreciation being a homeowner that I have an urge to clean, an urge to keep things clean, even if I do make it messy. That, I think that's a habit that I've changed. As far as like my room though, it's still, mess, still messy. <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We still I don't we know. I don't know what other habits. You definitely had like a desire to be more clean, which is cool. Yeah. A desire. Am I doing it? 
Next question. Has John ever mistaken Veronica as Nessa? Yes. When was that? I, I don't remember, Hold but it question. was like one of the times where I was like facing this way and wearing something that I don't usually wear and it's something that you would wear. And he was like, hey, Vanessa. He didn't do like anything. He was he just called me your name. And I was like, ah. Or there's been times where he'll be like, I thought you were Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if someone gets us mixed up, even if they just met us, it does not bother yeah, us. It's not we that could big of a care deal. less. Like no. we know that it that's what comes with being a twin. You know, it just it happens. I mean, even our own parents mix us up. So John and Aaron have done a really good job on uh, not mixing us up. I feel like one time Aaron put his hand on my shoulder and that was very weird. But <laughs> besides a that, large hand. And I was like, ooh, and he was like, ooh. <laughs> I am new, so how old are you guys and are you in school or have graduated? We're 26 years old and we are not in school. We did do school. We graduated high school in 2015 and then we went to college for several years. And about three years. About yeah. three years and we did not finish, but we can always go back if we need to. The circumstances in our life at the time, we couldn't go to school. It was just really hard balancing schoolwork and our job mm -hmm. without one of the two being sacrificed, if that means makes sense like our grades were suffering because we were missing school because we were doing work yeah. on set and we had to physically go to work during the week so it was just it's just it was complicated but you know it works out in the end quite frankly we loved school we cried when we canceled our classes because mm -hmm. I, I just it was something very important to me but we can definitely always go back so how did Nessa and John meet a lot of people ask this question so oh. I thought I would just go ahead and yeah, update everyone that's a good one basically I heard his song on TikTok his song Make You Mine um, and his band Public. I went and creeped on his band, loved their music, creeped on the actual band. You know, that's what you do. You creep on people. And I saw that John Vaughn liked Star Wars, was funny, and he seemed like a nice person. So I just messaged him like, hey, big fan of your music. Can't wait for more. Something like that and something about Star Wars. And then he never saw it. <laughs> never saw the message. And then several months later, I got a notification that he liked my photo. I was like, John! photo and I was like did he see my message and then he never read my message so I was really confused and Tuesday we still don't really know exactly what happened or why he didn't read my message but then I messaged him like several months later again my mom convinced me to message him again and reach out and I put my pride aside and actually at this point now Instagram had the thing where you can delete previous messages so I deleted the last message oh my and sent a new one <laughs> and then he actually saw that response I responded to one of his Instagram reels. He was doing some funny skit. We've talked every day since that day. That's how we met. And then, so we were long distance for a bit and then now we're not, so. Love it. When y'all were little, did y'all fantasize about doing everything together, like weddings? I think um, you mean like like doing weddings, family, houses, like do you know what I mean? Well, I was gonna say when we were little, we both agreed that we would never get married. What? Do you remember that? No. I remember that. We I made a pact that. that we would never get married. <laughs> well, I don't remember that. And I that we would throw a wedding celebration of just being us. That's <laughs> no, we did not. I remember having this conversation with mommy and daddy. And they were like, no, that's not the point of a wedding. And I was like, wait, so why do I have to find love? Why can't I just have a wedding? <laughs> It was, I didn't understand the concept of a wedding. And I was like, well, I'm just going to get married. Me and Nessa can just get married. We'll just celebrate together. <laughs> when the, we were little, definitely imagined a life very different than what it is now. <laughs> Yeah, but okay, so once we actually realized the concept of what marriage was and what a wedding is, I do think we started to like say like, hey, let's try to like do everything at the same time, like get married yeah. at the same time. Not like the same day, but like do everything, like live next to each other, have kids at the same time. Cause that would just be so fun for our kids to grow up together. So we definitely had um, imagined that. Maybe that could possibly work. There's definitely things that just, you know, life happens for differently for everyone and yeah, to each their own. I would hate to have a joint wedding ceremony. Ceremony, Because you're supposed to focus on one person that day. It's that a special would, day. That'd be the worst thing for me. Yeah. Well, I like your company. You could go down the aisle first. What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, it's, at this point, she's already married. So, Nessa, have you adjusted to living without Ronnie? Is it ever really hard? I love y'all so much. Y'all are amazing. I actually think we could probably answer this one both kind of like opposite. Mm. Have you adjusted to living without me? Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> is it hard? No. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, like, yes and no. I just felt like I was really ready. Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I'd been dating Aaron for four years. I had been thinking about, like, finding my own place when I was, like, 22, 23. I don't think I ever really vocalized it to anyone. And then, you know, once quarantine happened, I feel like me and Aaron lost, like, a year to our relationship. And I just got to spend so much time here with my parents and Nessa and my grandparents. And that was great. But at the same time, I was just like, I know what I want. It worked out the way it is. But it's like, it's so hard to say because I was the first one to move out. I feel like if it was the opposite, I'd be feeling how you feel. How do I feel? Do you feel lonely? Have you adjusted to living without Ronnie? Yeah. And is it ever really hard? Not really. <laughs> Because I we see each other all the time. I don't know. Do you worry about me? No, only when you call me to complain about something or when you're frustrated about something. I go like sister mode. I'm like, ah, I want to do something about it, but I can't. I think for me, it's just more like when Ronnie moved out, it actually really helped all of us kind of form like a more like a schedule in our everyday routines. Like, you know, when we know that Ronnie is coming over at a certain time, that's when we start work and then we end work when she leaves. And it's actually established like a really better routine. Like this morning, for example, Ronnie was supposed to come here at 11 and then we would start filming. I had from morning to 11 to do whatever I needed to do. So I, you know, got up, I worked out, I drank my coffee, I read a little bit. I just had a lot of time to to myself when Ronnie was here. I didn't have that. I wasn't able to do that because we didn't have like a set time because I feel like it was adjustment for all of us because as you guys know, we, well, I used to live with our parents. You still live with our parents. Mm -hmm. And I feel like because I was the first one to like, Tick the door and you know, what's the saying? That's Tick not the, the saying. Door. Anyway, I was the first one to take that first step into like, I am an adult, but like now I'm officially on my own. <laughs> yeah, but so, it still feels like she lives in this room. Literally, most of her <laughs> so stuff is still here. Carol's outfits right Carol's there. Carol's outfit, all of but her yeah. like vitamins. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been an adjustment. It's been a good adjustment. We're growing as individuals. Yeah, there are times where I get sad and I miss everyone, you know. It's life. You can mourn the life you had, but you can also celebrate the life you have now. What's your favorite thing about each other's partners? I think I really like how um, knowledgeable Aaron is in a lot of things. He's smart. I think, smart. I think really he knows how guy. to do a lot of stuff. He's smart and he has a lot of knowledge about like uh, medical things and like cameras and nerdy stuff. Like he just, he just knows a lot. And so I, I like that about him. He's very knowledgeable. But my favorite thing about John is how he treats you. Oh. But is it supposed to be like a quality about him? No, I, like nice I don't guy. know what's your favorite thing about each other's part. Um, That's a good one. I, th I like how he treats you. I think he treats you really nice. He's a gentleman and he's so kind to you and he treats you so amazing. And you he deserve does. that. He's a, he's a very, very sweet, loving guy. That's what I like about him. And he's funny. And sometimes I feel like I can relate to him when it comes to like being an introvert. You both are introverts for sure. <laughs> Here's a question for Nessa. Is Vanessa moving out soon? No. <laughs> there were so many questions. I feel like I had to like pick that one. No, I'm not moving out. I don't want to move out. <laughs> not yet, at least. I mean, eventually you'll well, probably, have a life. probably, but not right now. No. What's one of the most expensive things you own, like in your room? Oh, she's going to grab it. I don't bring this to my house. Why? You should. It's such a cool bag. Oh, I love that bag. This is my most expensive purchase I've ever bought my, well. Besides the furnace in our house that we had to buy, which is This is the most expensive purchase that I've ever made. In your room. Willingly this... in my room. Yeah, that's the question. This is, yes, it's a Dior bag. It was from the real real so it was used but it's in great condition it actually really wasn't used but yeah got some lactate i got a to go poopery <laughs> and a hairband bag haul oh my god expensive dior you need <laughs> i carry poopery in my most expensive <laughs> ronnie has poopery in her most expensive in my dior, dior bag. bag i'll just be 
honest, this was like two thousand dollars. It was a lot, but that one's a lot. But she but, she saved up for that and everything. She mm -hmm. really worked hard for that. Purse. I did. I saved up um, in everything. I actually think one of the most expensive things I own in my room. It's probably an actual hand woven Dior bag that we were gifted when we went to Fashion mm. Week in Paris. I believe those bags are really really expensive. They they range from like five to ten thousand dollars. But that was gifted, so I actually didn't didn't buy that bag. But I do think like my iMac and my PCs, probably the most expensive things. Yeah. And probably. then also my nano leaf lights. I have those like triangle lights on my wall. Just a pack of nine of those are two ninety nine, okay. and I have about thirty up there. What? Oh. So okay. Honestly, at the end of the day, if you really think about it, those nano leaf lights are really expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you guys go to church together? We do. we do. On Sundays, we try to make it a priority to all go to church together, and mm -hmm. sometimes we can't always do it, but we try to go as a family. It's yeah. Pretty fun. It's a priority. Is there something that has changed in your routine since you do not live together? I can put my makeup on faster. Me too. I don't know why. Why is that? I, I literally can put it on within ten minutes. Me too. Or like under ten minutes. It used to be a thirty-minute makeup routine. Me too. Like, mm, 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 and then, but now I'm just like. Why is that? Because that's no the same idea. for me. I literally can do it in 15, 10 minutes. That's so weird. Isn't it? It? I don't know what it is. For some, I just can do my makeup faster. Me too. Um, okay, that's a big change in your routine. Mm -hmm. Ronnie, do you guys have plans to get Guppy a friend? Love you both. We always keep going back and forth, but the decision that we've made for now, Guppy will... Oh, this is so sad to say. I don't... I think Guppy will be the last dog until we have kids. We don't think we're going to get him a friend. We don't think we're gonna get another dog after Guppy. I, I, I think having kids and a dog at the same time will be too stressful. We're gonna spoil Guppy. We we try our best to give him the most attention, take him on walks, take him places. He's a spoiled little pug. He's okay for and now. He has Tiger. He's a Tiger. Tiger is a semi friend. Tiger he, kind of he doesn't like him, but you know. He's constantly seeing other dogs. He's okay. That's what we're saying for now. It's always changing. Every month it's like, we're gonna get him a friend. Then the next month was like, he's fine on his own. And then now it's like, he's the last dog we're getting until kids. <laughs> So we'll see okay. what it is next week. <laughs> what is the best thing about being married and what is the worst thing about it? I think the best thing about being married is getting to live with the person you love and experiencing life with them, learning new things about yourself, learning new things about your partner, and just growing as an individual. I think the worst thing... Mm. Can I name a few? <laughs> I'm Ronnie. kidding, I'm kidding. No, Aaron is so great to live with. Aaron does not have any. He's clean, he cooks, he does his own laundry, he keeps his side of the bed clean. Out of the two in the relationship, I'm the problem. <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, he doesn't get mad. <laughs> I'm the one that gets mad. I think the worst part about it is the house. It's amazing, but we're learning as house owners and it's a lot of money. <laughs> So that's probably the worst thing about marriage so far is the whole house the situation. House. But marriage itself, I would say there's nothing bad about it. What's your favorite makeup product? I really love the Rare Beauty Mascara. And I also love this Dr. Jart BB Cream that I use. My holy grail beauty product or, or makeup product is Smashbox 24 Hour Finish Foundation. Because that stuff lasts. Is that what you're wearing right now? Yeah. It looks nice. It's what I wear all the time. It's not like caking or like separating at the end of the day. Like it's like still like on my face at the end of the day. How are you guys? How has this year been so far compared to the last year? I think that's such a nice question. So Thank you. How are you digital potato artist? Um, <laughs> I feel like right now there's just a lot going on in our lives. Just a lot going on with work and in our personal lives. So I feel sometimes overwhelmed and even like my brain, I feel like, like I, 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 can't even like function sometimes. There was like one word to describe this year versus last year. It would be crazier. Yeah, this, this year has been crazy. Ronnie's married, she got a house. Just There's like so many things yeah. going on in her life and then there's so many things like happening in like at my life at home. Yeah. But overall, even though there's so much going on, I'm so happy and I just feel so blessed to be in where, where I'm at in my life right now. All right, so the real question is, who stays in Ronnie's room now that 
that she moved. Dun dun dun! Who does stay in here? Actually, guess. Yeah, I think guess the last stay. person to stay in this room was our grandma. Are you both Christian? Yes. yes. We've been, we're, we're Christian, but I think the more important thing is to say that we, we have a relationship with God. People can get carried away with a bunch of other stuff, but the most important thing is to have a personal relationship with the Lord and to be praying a lot and just trying your best to live a good life. And how important is your faith to you? Important. I, I pulled these questions because I feel like we never really talk about our faith a lot and it is really important. You know, we try to go to church every Sunday. We do try our best to um, live just like a, a godly lifestyle and to have a relationship with God. And I think it does affect our decisions in life. Like the most important decisions we do it is based off of our faith and what we believe. Do you guys still have telepathy or has it faded since Ronnie has left? Uh, I think we actually still have I think telepathy. So. She comes home wearing the same outfits as me. We'll either have the same shirt on, but just different colors. There's one thing recently, I can't really go into uh, detail about it, but I had just said something to my parents about something. And then I looked at down at my text and it was like five minutes earlier when I was actually talking about the thing. Ronnie texted me the exact same thought. Mm -hmm. So our twin telepathy is definitely yeah, going it's strong. Still it's still there. Has not disappeared and I don't think it will. Okay, this is a, this is a, a controversial question. Oh, what? Do do you guys prefer dark mode or light mode on your devices? I love light mode. Like, I'm in light yeah. mode. Everyone is always like, oh my gosh, it's so bright. Why do you like light mode? I don't even know why. I just prefer it. And it's not a crime to like light mode. I think I go through phases. I think Twitter at one point was in dark mode. Oh, I think it was. And then I didn't like how Instagram looked in dark mode. So I yeah. did light mode. Yeah. <laughs> Why isn't your mom in any videos? She has been in some videos. You just have to look for them. You'll probably look up Meryl Twins' mom and then you'll see that she's in some certain videos. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, our mom is very camera shy and we don't mm. want to force her to be in a video and we don't want to force her to do something she doesn't want to do. And you know what I mean? Like, what if we tried forcing you to be in videos? And you didn't want to be in them. Yeah, I think it's just more of like a respect thing and our yeah. mom is camera shy. There were so many questions asking about her mom and if no she was way. real or if she was around or not. And Throughout our entire YouTube career, that's always been still? something so, yeah, like people are so curious about. We do have a mom, our parents are still together. She's always here, she really helps us behind the scenes. But she's she's there, she's just not on camera. <laughs> she's a very <laughs> proud mom behind the scenes. Why did you guys go about the publicity of your relationships differently? Love you guys. I started dating Aaron in 2017 and that was like a really different era of social media especially in this fandom with our fans it's just uh, just people in general and just the way they perceived people on the internet I wanted to protect me and Aaron as much as I could from outside voices it didn't bother Aaron as much but it kind of it bothered me a lot if I would have gone public early in the relationship I feel like that really would have affected my mental health in me and Aaron's relationship even though I feel like it shouldn't have, like I, I know someone's probably like, I can't believe you would let comments like affect you in that way. But like when you're engulfed in this as like your career, your life, you're on it 24 seven, it can do something to you mentally. So that is like the number one thing I wanted to protect myself and Aaron from. Some people caught on, which is fine. I mean, it wasn't like we couldn't hide it. I didn't feel like I was hiding a relationship. Yeah, and then four years into it, we were just like, you know what, let's just keep not ever saying anything because this is what's working for us. Whereas like Nessa, it's a very different situation. Well, I've always been a very private person in general about my personal life. Same with John. John is also a very private person. It's different when, you, when you've when you met your person, when you know that that person is the one. And I just felt like I didn't want to have to sneak around and hide that I was, you know, in a relationship with John. That's just a lot of work. I wanted to be able to post that if I was on a date that I could have him in like a story or maybe he could post a story and that we didn't have to like hide. I think there is a thing where you can be private but still let people know you're in a relationship. And that's what John and I both agreed on. We wanted people to know that we were in a relationship but that we wouldn't really get into the private, you know, details of our relationship. I don't 
don't know. It's just every situation is different. Mm -hmm. And I do love how Ronnie and Aaron did just how, how they went about their relationship and when it comes to social media and stuff. And I actually am very happy with how John and I did our thing too, because I have freedom to just post whenever I want, but also to, you know, be private. You guys are super respectful with our relationship and stuff. So thank you. So thank you guys for being respectful. How do you maintain a healthy and fun relationship for so long? With us? They mean like a relationship, like, oh, like with a with significant, significant other. other. Yeah. What if they're asking if it's about us? My mom always told us to be kind to each other because she said at the end of the day, no matter what, you will always have family. So she said that's why it's important to be nice to each other and treat each other yeah. kindly. You don't want to burn bridges. And then when you when you need help in life, you reach out and then they're like, mm. you want them to be like, yes, I'll help you. So mm -hmm. now when it comes to when it comes to love, the most important thing for a how to maintain a healthy and fun relationship is communication. I think that is the biggest key to any relationship. Being open-minded to other people's feelings. I think that is so important and that is something that is getting lost in this world where we only communicate on phones sometimes. I think communicating in person is a lot harder nowadays to maintain a healthy relationship. You need to always be communicating how you feel and you also have to know that sometimes your feelings may be like wrong and that's okay. If you feel angry and you shouldn't really be angry for about something and someone tells you, hey, you don't need to be angry about that. Come on, move on. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But there are times where it's okay to be angry about stuff. So mm -hmm. you just have to communicate and communicate in a nice, loving, patient way. And also listen to others and be patient, I would say communication, being yourself right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Don't hide anything. Honesty is the best. You know, when I first met Aaron, I was like, I can't pretend I'm cool. I'm not that cool. I just told him like, hey, look, I have all these problems. Like I have this, I have these walls. Like, what do you think about it? And he like, he loves me no matter what. Trust, building trust. Even if you have walls built up, you can tear them down with someone. You can learn how to trust. I like that we can encourage each other to be better people. Aaron, I feel like Aaron's made me a better person and I feel like I've made him a better person. So I feel yeah. like if you can't find that in someone, then I don't I don't know. Because mm -hmm. relationships are about growth and learning together. Mm -hmm. So if you can't encourage each other, you can't learn, can't become a better person with someone, I think that's a red flag. Is it hard sticking to your personal beliefs in the YouTube world? Love you guys. I would say it's not hard sticking to your personal beliefs in the YouTube world because YouTube, people talk about anything. There's like a community for anything. Mm. I feel like a lot of you guys who watch us are very like-minded. We kind of all think the same way. Whereas like other people on a different channel mm -hmm. may not agree. And that is totally okay. I think off YouTube, it's a little bit harder. I think sometimes I see things online that I disagree with, but I obviously can't really say anything and I'm just not the person to say stuff anyways. I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of pressure to say things sometimes when I'm not comfortable saying stuff, even if I agree or disagree. Like, I don't know. I just feel like it is hard sometimes to find that balance. But when it comes to like YouTube in general, it is very easy for me and Ronnie to be our Ourselves, even in our live streams and stuff. We even talk with our members on our live streams about how we all kind of like are always all on the same page, just mm -hmm. with like general values with life, like to be a good person, to love others, and do the right thing, and to choose to do the right thing. We kind of get deep on our live streams and our members, but so I just thought this was a good question yeah. because I think it I think it can be easy. I also think it can be hard sometimes. It just depends. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And that was the last question. Oh, that was a good question to end on. That was a good question. We kind of got deep in this Q&A, which I like because the older we get, the more the more we learn, the more wisdom we have to share with you guys. So thank you so much to everyone who sent in questions and so sorry to everyone who sent in questions that we did not answer. Yeah. I mean, there was a, there was a lot. A ton. There is so thousands of questions. We tried to pick some cool questions to update you guys with what's going on in our lives. And so I hope you guys enjoyed our updated Q&A and thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel by clicking this button right over here. Subscribe to our live channel where we live stream every single week and check out some of the other videos we've done and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.